Section 5.2, hybrid atomic orbitals. Now here we are going to attempt to explain a bit of an issue. And this issue comes from the problem between reconciling valence bond theory with what we learned at the end of chapter four there in the separate theory. Now in the water molecule, according to valence bond theory, bonds should form from the overlap of an S orbital hydrogen. So here, these are the hydrogen atoms and their S orbitals. So these bonds should form from the overlap of an S orbital from hydrogen and a P orbital from oxygen. Now this should make the HOH bond angle 90 degrees since these P orbitals are perpendicular to one another. But we know from the separate theory that's not the case. That bond angle is actually it's a bit less than 109.5 since water has a bent molecular geometry. So what's the issue here? Why, why do we have a problem? How can we reconcile valence bond theory with the separate theory? And this matches up, or this comes from our need for hybridization. So the experimental values for that bond angle are around 104.5 degrees. Now what we're going to do here in hybridization, so this, the key here means the word is the word hybrid. So we are going to combine. We are going to combine 2s and 2p orbitals to make hybrid orbitals. And once we do that, the appropriate geometry is obtained. Now there are a few important concepts in hybridization. First, they only exist in covalently bonded atoms. They have different shapes compared to S, P, D, and F. Now a set of hybrid orbitals is generated by combining atomic orbitals. It's important to note here that the number of hybrid orbitals created should be equal to the number of atomic orbitals used. All orbitals in a set of hybrid orbitals are equivalent in shape and energy. The type of orbitals depends on the electron pair geometry and hybrid orbitals form sigma bonds. This last one's very important. Hybrid orbitals overlap to form sigma bonds. Unhybridized orbitals overlap to form pi bonds. So we'll get into that a little more in the third section of this chapter. Okay, now let's talk about how we figure out hybridization. So first we're gonna, gonna go through it the long way. And as you begin to practice with these, you're going to be very, you're, you will be able to very quickly spot the hybridization of atoms. So to hybridize, or to figure out the hybridization necessary, first you need to draw your correct Lewis structure, then determine the number of electron domains on that central atom, draw a ground state orbital diagram, maximize the number of unpaired electrons, then you can create your hybrid orbitals and place electrons in the hybrid orbitals. First unpaired, then if necessary, start pairing them. So let's start with a basic example. We're gonna look at SP hybridization. So we're looking at the molecule beryllium chloride. So here our Lewis structure is Cl single bonded to beryllium. Now you would have lone pairs on the chlorine atoms, but we're just focusing on the central atom beryllium here. So beryllium just has two single bonds. So it has two electron domains. Now next you're gonna, you're, you will want to draw the ground state orbital diagram of that central atom. So beryllium, it's, it's number four in the periodic table. Its electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2. So we're just focus, focusing on those valence electrons. So we've got two electrons here and 2s, and all of the 2p orbitals are empty. Next step is you wanna maximize the unpaired electrons by promoting electrons. So you're gonna take one of those electrons and you're gonna promote it so we can maximize the number of unpaired electrons. Now what you need to do is create the hybrid orbitals. So remember, the number of electron domains is equal to the number of atomic orbitals combined, which is therefore equal to the number of hybrid orbitals created. So our central atom, beryllium, had two electron domains, which means we need to combine two atomic orbitals to produce two hybrid orbitals. So you notice that we are combining an S orbital and a P orbital. So when you mix, an S and a P, these are called SP hybrid orbitals, where the subscripts tell you how many of each orbital you combined. So we combined one S orbital with one P orbital. Thus, we created SP hybrid orbitals. These two that weren't mixed, they are left over as unhybridized two P orbitals. So now we have these SP hybrid orbitals, and these hybrid orbitals are going to be the orbitals that form those single bonds with chlorine. This is also very helpful because if we think about what these orbitals look like, so beryllium, this is what its 2s orbital looks like, and this is what a 2p orbital looks like. If you take those and you hybridize them, you mix them together, you get these two orbitals. So you get these two sp hybrid orbitals. 
If you take these two orbitals right here and you overlap them on, or you overlay them on the same image, you get this picture right here. And this looks just like the linear electron domain or the linear molecular geometry. And so here with hybridization, we have explained why BeCl2 is linear and how beryllium is able to form two single bonds, two sigma bonds to the chlorine atoms. Okay, we're gonna keep making it a little more complicated. We're gonna go to an sp2 hybridization example. So we're looking at boron trihydride. So I'm gonna move through these steps fairly quickly at this point because they, it starts to get a little repetitive. Again, you're gonna draw the Lewis structure, determine the number of domains on the central atom. Boron has three domains. Then you're gonna draw that ground state orbital diagram. Boron is 2s2, 2p1. Now maximize the unpaired electrons. So you're gonna take this one, promote it up here to maximize the unpaired electrons. Now, if we think back to that Lewis structure, boron, it had three electron domains. So we're gonna combine three atomic orbitals to produce three hybrid orbitals. Now we are mixing together a single S orbital with two P orbitals. So this is these are called SP2 hybrid orbitals. It's a single S orbital, so S1, just that one, that, that exponent of one is unwritten, P2. See, it's two P orbitals, SP2. So we have these three SP2 hybrid orbitals and we have this one left over unhybridized 2p orbital. Once again, if we take that s orbital and we mix it, we hybridize it with those two 2p orbitals, we get these three hybrid orbitals. These are the what sp2 hybrid orbitals look like. If you take these three orbitals right here and you overlay them, you get this picture. And once again, this looks very much like the molecular geometry we expected. This looks like a trigonal planar arrangement with 120 degrees between the bonds. So this explains why BH3 is trigonal planar. Okay, so you may have noticed so far that the domains determine the hybridization. So what you can do is you can add the subscripts and it should equal the number of domains, the number of atomic orbitals combined, and therefore the number of hybrid orbitals produced. So here, if we look at this molecule, if we look at our central atom nitrogen, it has one, two, three. It has three electron domains, which means it is sp2 hybridized. See, if you add the subscripts, or excuse me, the superscripts here, s1, p2, one plus two is three, which means three electron domains. So three electron domains, sp2 hybridized. Here, this carbon, one, two, three electron domains, it's sp2 hybridized. These two carbons, one, two, three, one, two, three, they both have three electron domains. They are both sp2 hybridized. Okay, quick knowledge check question. How many p orbitals are required to generate a set of sp2 hybrid orbitals? Okay, the correct answer is b2, given or as noted by that superscript, that exponent right there. Two p orbitals are required to generate a set of sp2 hybrid orbitals. Okay, let's keep going. Let's look at an sp3 hybridization example. So CH4 or methane. So draw the Lewis structure, determine the number of domains on the central atom. It's got four. Draw that ground state orbital diagram. Carbon is 2s2, 2p2. Now we're gonna take this electron, we're gonna bump it up here to maximize the number of unpaired electrons. So this is what our excited state orbital diagram looks like. Now we're gonna combine all four of these. We had four electron domains, so we're gonna combine all four atomic orbitals to produce four hybrid orbitals. And again, or you should note that we mixed one s orbital with three p orbitals. So these are called sp3 hybrid orbitals. All right, now if you take these orbitals, so you mix an S with these three P orbitals, these are what the hybrid orbitals look like. And when these are overlaid on the same image, it looks just like that tetrahedral arrangement. So again, this helps to explain why CH4 is tetrahedral. Okay. So here are some practice problems for you to try that cover the first half of this section. So take a pause the video, take a few minutes and give these practice problems a try. Once you have done so, 
Here are the answers. And again, you can download the PowerPoint slides to take a look at these for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and split this video into two halves. So we'll pick it up in the second half when we look at some hypervalent hybridization examples.